call to a nine here. And I touched on this in a video last week. I kind of talked about it on Ransom Raves last Wednesday in ammunition. So at first we had a shortage where nobody could find ammunition. Then I believe this is the ammo crunch. And what I mean by the crunch is the pricing. The pricing of ammunition is fluctuating at a rapid pace. It still has a stranglehold on the market. There's a lot of validity to some people's videos. There's other videos that I'm like, you know, I'm not going to bother with it. Uh, but I had a video that I put out last week that I just referenced that somebody from Fort Scott Munitions that said that they worked for him pretty much said I hit it the nail on the head with the video that I made. Whether they work for that company or not, I don't know. But I have done an interview with them down in Tulsa at the Wanamaker Gun Show. I even bought two boxes of their ammunition that I'm going to be prepared to use this year for hunting. So it's really great to get a hold of these American manufacturers and talk to them and do interviews and really find out what their product is about, what they're giving to the consumer. And that's what I really do uh, with uh, the, the stigma of what I'm seeing here lately, and that's European manufacturing companies really dominating the markets in my area. Again, I went to four places today, and these were the heavy hitters where this, inf this ammunition was on the shelf, and it was reasonable. I saw some Winchester. Uh, it might have been 5.56, so that might have a little bit of different bear bearing on it, but $18.99 a box compared to this, which was $20.99 $20 a box. And this is a 30 round box. The other one was 20. So that was a huge discrepancy. And that's why I call it, you know, an ammo crunch now. You're really gonna have to budget of where you're gonna place your money. You're really gonna have to be, uh, especially if you're living day to day or you're not a, a shooter uh, every day like people on YouTube, you're really going to have to be budget minded and, and really find where you fall in. You don't want to go broke having a bunch of ammunition uh, <laughs> that, you know what I'm saying, that you can't really afford to shoot, uh, but yet it's going to be quality. So that's stuff that I look at. And when these big companies um, that produce ammunition from other countries, I really do my due diligence on them. If I had the opportunity to interview them, I would. If I even had the opportunity just to talk to them and really get a basis of their products, that's even better because now I know what I'm getting. I don't want to put ammunition in my firearm that's either going to damage my firearm or damage myself. Uh, we've all seen how that would play out in a lot of different scenarios, especially recently. So, Igman. Igman's been on the shelf in a lot of other YouTube's video, YouTubers' videos. Tons of them. Uh, quite a few. I would say at least 10 videos I've watched. A lot of people have Igman on their shelves. Whether it's their rifle ammunition or uh, their big bore stuff. It's sitting there. It's there along with Norma. Norma, there's a lot of this stuff on, on the shelf. And here's a box of 9mm that I picked up uh, last week as well. So I'm seeing this kind of ammunition on the shelves. I'm not seeing Hornady. I'm not seeing Remington. I'm not seeing American Eagle or Federal. I'm not seeing any of that stuff. You know, granted, I could be late to the game. You know what I'm saying? People have already come in there and bought the boxes that were available. That's always a possibility. These are my opinions when I make these videos. These are my opinions. Uh, this is what I'm seeing in my area. But I'm seeing it being really dominated right now. The spots where I would find American Eagle or I would find Hornady, these companies have taken those spots. And they have a ton of presence on these shelves. So a quick rundown of Igman. I did my own research on it, and I highly suggest you do your research. I will probably put a link down into this video of the video I watched about this company. So Igman Ammo. Bosnia-Herzegovina established March 6, 1950. Now there's a structure to this company. 51% is owned by the government. 49% is privately owned. Uh, the government's always got their hand in people's pockets. Uh, they have a raw material uh, storage uh, unit there. They have quality control. They have labs. To give you a bigger perspective about Igman, is they're one of the largest 
small caliber ammo manufacturers in Europe. 16,000 square foot production and auxiliary facilities. So that should give you a perspective on Igman that they're really big in those markets. The calibers range from 5.56 all the way up to 12.7 millimeters. The bullets produced in this facility are ball, tracer, armor piercing, armor piercing incendiaries, armor piercing tracers, uh, blanks, match, HPBTs, even ignition charges for rifle grenades. And one more fun fact here that we have going for you is they also make ammo links, especially for belt feds. That's what that is. Uh, so they make those. And all this stuff is made in-house. They have an in-house testing range. Almost their entire production is sold in the international markets in more than 50 countries worldwide. And just for a little tidbit for you nerds, they employ about 1,200 employees to sustain uh, this company's mentality. So there's some information there, and I've got this from their website, or not their website, but their video, and I believe this is pretty good. This is stuff where I can look at is they're making military cartridges. Uh, they're feeding a ton of percentage uh, of countries their ammunition. So this is stuff that I can say, okay, we're going to give this a shot. We're going to shoot it, and I'm not going to be like, hmm, where's this place at or you know some stuff that i've shot in the past that i still see on the shelves today i'm like well yeah, i'm not touching that stuff so there's a lot of uh, uh things that you got to think about as a new gun owner especially especially in your infancy of owning firearms that i do my due diligence again we saw a recall on winchester white box nine millimeter that's why I never throw my boxes away. That's why I put it in the ammo can, whether it's in the box, and throw a little packet in there just to keep moisture out. Just because if these companies that are rolling all this ammunition that they say that they're doing, and they're trying to put out as fast as they can, slip-ups are going to occur, and that's what we saw from Winchester. So that's something to get in your mind. You don't have to do it, but that's what I do just to make sure because I have bought... Uh, box of Winchester here uh, in, in times past during that recall unfortunately I checked it out and my box wasn't recalled good thing I only bought one box so you really have to do your due diligence as a gun owner and I'm not trying to scare people or anything but do your due diligence do your research don't take it from some person off the internet this is stuff that I've accumulated this is, this is information that I went and, and sought out, and I think you should do it. I think everybody should do it. You shouldn't uh, uh, stick to one thing. You should do your own research all the time. So I really want to put this stuff on paper, grab a box of Federal out, see what kind of groups we get, see what we're dealing with. If, if this is stuff that you know I can really load magazines with, or this is stuff I can take to the range and just kind of plink around. But looking at their statistics and what they're rolling for, I think this might be quality. Again, there's always discrepancies in ammunition. Chronographs don't always agree, uh, as some people uh, establish in their videos. But I'd really like to see what this looks like on paper, what kind of groups I'm going to get. I will warn you, when I do these testings, I'm not shooting $3,000 guns. I'm not shooting $5,000 guns. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting things uh, that I've put together that I know work, that I put thousands of rounds into. They may not be the, the highest of the high quality guns, but I know this thing's going to shoot. I know it's going to put rounds down range. And we can just see where we go. Maybe this might be better for my rifle. Maybe it will be worse. That's why you should always test new ammunition. But again, I really want to caution Man, manufacturing here in America, uh, you kind of might want to start looking at the market and see what, what people are buying because right now what I see is a lot of people are, are selling companies from European uh, uh, products across my area. And I'm again, I've gone to four different places and Igman's been in the shelf and Norma's been on the shelf in all these places. So 
again, this is another call. It's it's nothing that I'm I'm totally going to uh, 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 break down and cry about. But you're losing a share of the market. You're losing my business at that point. And uh, I'm I shoot at a high volume. So be prepared of when you go into a shop, you're not too sure about some ammunition that you're not you're not uh, uh, relative to from what you used to shoot back before the coup and, and what, we're, what we're dealing with today in, in society today. Again, a lot of things have changed. Uh, the coup has really changed the dynamics of the world and it's showing uh, every day I wake up, I don't know about you, but every day I wake up and I read something or I watch watch some kind of uh, a broadcast, I'm always seeing something different uh, with the market. Whether it's politicians that are trying to restrict the access to firearms and ammunition, even to the point where they wanted to tax people that use guns and ammunition in an in inappropriate way. You know, I shouldn't be liable for that and nobody else should be liable for that. And especially the manufacturers. That's not how, <laughs> that's not how this works. So do your due diligence. I believe this is good information. I believe this is something to look into, especially if you have it on your shelves. And, you know, the other stuff is just priced way too high. This may be another opportunity for you to get even more trigger time behind that firearm. Again, shooting is a perishable skill. It will leave you if you do not continue to practice and be proficient with your firearm. So this is, I believe, good information. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get something out of it. And I hope you continue to shoot your gun. I really do. I think it's awesome. I think it's a it's a good thing to do. And uh, it'll benefit you in the long run. So with this big spiel all, all put together, I'd like to thank my old and my new subscribers and just the people that zip through. I greatly do appreciate it. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Do it for everybody on YouTube, especially this channel. If you watch it and you're subscribed to it, it really helps out in the long run. And like always, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.